this is a trinity of measures that fall back on themselves like an Arubarus swallowing his own tail. They each have specific lengths of measure, but they also exist as a three-in-one unit. What we're forced to conclude is a universal constant of measure, which itself points us to the relationship between five and six. Now, in sacred geometry, five and six have always represented the microcosm and macrocosm, respectively. One of my favorite examples of this intimate relationship is manifest in the bent pyramid at Darshur, the only pyramid built to express two different angles, the very ones that define the pentagram and the hexagram. The lower half ends abruptly, but if continued to its invisible geometric peak, it would be a pure 60-degree equilateral triangle, the perfect half of a six-sided hexagram. The upper half face is exactly the 72-degree angle that defines the five-sided pentagram. The bent pyramid, therefore, perfectly encodes the connection between the microcosm of earthly life and the macrocosm of the divine goal, as expressed beautifully as they emerge from the common radius of the Vesica Pisces. These are the only two polygons whose connecting points with the circle form an almost perfect right angle. There is surely something deeply significant at the root of why the ancients went to this extraordinary length to encode such a deceptively simple ratio. And having discovered its presence in the universal constant of measure, perhaps we should consider the actual definition of its components. Think about it. The very rate at which unity, 1, increases, that's e, through pi, circular geometry. Might this be a clue to the great enigma at the heart of the greatest cycle, the precession of the equinox? Perhaps this connection of 5 cubic meter on the right to 6, the full foot cubic meter on the left, has relevance when we consider that the observable rate of precession vacillates between two extremes that seem to be almost perfect multiples of 5 and 6. To illustrate, precession was at its slowest around 500 AD at 50 arc seconds per year, which translates to one degree in 72 years. Note the similarity, 72 years, 72 degrees. The full 360 degree cycle, if that rate were to remain steady, would take 25,920 years. That's the most commonly quoted value of the great year of precession. But studies conducted at the Binary Research Institute show that this rate is steadily increasing. So look, the average of 60 arc seconds per year fits perfectly within this 5-6 ratio. Let's see what results that produces at 60 arc seconds per year. That gives us 1 degree would take 60 years. And the full 360 degree cycle at that rate would be 21,600 years. Let's see that theory in action. The, the BRI's model shows our sun bound in an elliptical orbit with a binary star. Here at apoapsis is when precession is slowest at 50 arc seconds per year. This would equate to the period we call the dark age when we are farthest from the great center. Total great year would be 25920. The point is there's a relationship between the meter cubit which is 5 to the full foot cubic meter, which is 6. So the Earth, in fact the whole solar system, is turning, precessing at a rate that can be expressed in multiples of 5 when we're at the slowest point of precession and the dark age. When we're moving faster, we get to periapsis at this point, which is the golden age. We're moving faster, we're moving in multiples of six to cover the same distance. The average of these two extremes then would be 23,760 years. There may indeed be a connection between the ancient Vedic assessment of a 24,000 year precession cycle and the newly discovered 6-5 ratio in the universal constant of measure hidden within the Great Pyramid.